Okay, so um, really lucky to be here tonight with Vlad. And um, the way I like to moderate or talk to people is asking a couple of questions of him and then giving you the chance to ask some questions. And then I'll have my, I have my, my list here. Whether we get to them all or not, doesn't matter. But I think it's really important for us to make it interactive. And seeing as many of you are Russian, feel free to disagree. <laughs> if there's something we say, nah, nah, you know, I mean, Americans are so polite. I'm from Germany originally. <coughs> Americans are so polite, but seeing as we are mixed company here, go for it and say something that just it makes it much more interesting, right? <laughs> well, I, well, maybe I should have asked you ahead of time. <laughs> I don't know. I'm just, I'm right? just taking it in. All right. All right. So let me ask you the first question. Yeah. Can you explain to us what Ring Central does and how did you get the idea? Sure. So, so first, I'm really, really happy I'm not following the guy who sold Skype because that'd be a hard act to follow. So, this, you know, I'm an opening act there. Uh, how did I get the idea? Um, so, uh, so ancient history, right? So, uh, I uh, founded the company back in the '90s, and some of you were born then, and some were not, probably. But uh, uh, I did a company back in the '90s called Ring Zero Systems. And uh, so my background is technical. I'm a software engineer. Uh, wasn't born here, but I came here as a teenager. I was one of the early guys in software. Uh, for whatever reason, it appealed to me, sort of before it was in vogue and all of that. Uh, and uh, in any case, ancient history uh, is that I basically had a consulting company, and we were dealing uh, with a bunch of hardware manufacturers. And we were sort of at the leading edge of what eventually became known as multimedia PCs. So when I got started, uh, there was no, can, people can hear and see me, I assume, right? So, uh, so yeah, so um, PCs were sort of stopped being just computing machines and they were getting things like, oh, audio, you know, and video, not so much in the way of moving pictures yet, but more, you know, still frames, you know, photos. Uh, so we were sort of involved with some of that work and uh, also communications. So uh, long story short, uh, very first machines that were capable of voice processing, uh, we were involved with some of those very early developments, okay? Uh, sort of as consultants, technical developers. And uh, basically what happened is we were asked to help integrate a third party application whose name I honestly do not remember at this point because I only remember good things in life. And uh, this is one of the few times when I basically said no to a customer and they said, but what do you mean? <laughs> you know, no, what, why, why not? And I said, well, because we think that we can do a better app. So they said, you are surely kidding, uh, kidding, and we said, no, we actually are not going to integrate, and we actually are going to develop our own app, so we did. So that app did well. We ended up bundling that application on most uh, computers for a number of years. We shipped about 25 million of them, of our applications worldwide, lots of languages. It was very interesting. We had... Uh, uh, you know, uh, people of various nationalities, much more exotic than German, I should say, you know, uh, all in our labs. I moved 34 times. Okay? All, 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 all in our lab, all at the same time, with all of these translations, and I had like 50 people like beating at it, you know, in various versions of Chinese and Japanese and, you know, and so forth. But uh, it sort of worked out. Now, what that application did, that voice application, it was basically a mini PBX. So it was an application that put a, um, an answering machine and a sort of fax, software fax. Uh, okay, uh, when was this? This was in the 90s, so we're talking so early. 90, uh, three, nah, 94, wow. nine, yeah. So you were very much ahead of this. Uh, yeah, uh, well, there was no curve, you know, we, we, we were there, we, 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 we were just there, you know. So, but this was one of the very first uh, sort of PC as phone, PC as fax applications. And they did, you know, pretty well, and we ended up, uh, you know, shipping more and more units, and then eventually selling the company uh, to Motorola, which was a customer at the time. And the thing was that uh, I kind of got the bug that uh, people are actually sort of in need of that, you know, type of product and c can use it and something I could use. Mm -hmm. And uh, actually the very first idea and why I sort of really wanted to develop it, I actually was working on the contract and I was at home and, uh, 
uh, you know, I needed to fax a contract over, you know, and uh, I just couldn't do that from home, and there was no way I was going to jump back in the car, go to the office, so, you know, I said, well, you know, we think, anyway. yeah, the Kinkas was already, <laughs> you know, but uh, no, not, not that bad. But anyway, but so, uh, so I just knew that there was this uh, amazing demand for a uh, communications solution, software, whatever you want to call it, uh, for a very small business. Something I could relate to, something sort of our team could relate to. And the other thing we could all relate to is that uh, this PC platform, Windows platform, and, and Bill Gates is absolutely, totally one of my heroes, but it really, really sucks. It's really bad. <laughs> it doesn't work, okay? And uh, so what we decided to do was, um, uh, second go around, right, is we said, look, you know, let's do it sort of, let's do it right, what, whatever we considered to be right then, uh, which is, okay, let's use the internet, uh, let's uh, use what we now call the cloud, that was before sort of the term was, was, was used, but let's run a service, you know, in, I don't remember what we called it before the cloud, you know, but let's run the service somewhere out there in the ether space and uh, make sure that it actually works for a change, you know, and... Um, and it did. And it, and it did. Well, now it does, you know, eventually. Initially it was <laughs> more, more questionable. But, but that's, that's it. All right, I put so many questions in between else. So how you, you, I asked you before, you bootstrapped the company. How hard was that? <coughs> Well, before I bootstrap, it was very easy because I was completely available, you know? Right. Uh, so which company are we talking about? Actually, we're talking about Ring Central. I said you this, this current company. Right, the current company. You know, uh, gosh. So you bootstrap, at what point did you start raising funding? At what point did you realize, I need uh, outside funding? Right. So look, so my history is maybe a little bit different. Yeah. Uh, so the first company was not funded. So the first company was a pure bootstrap. Uh, I took $5,000 of my own, or as I was corrected on numerous occasions, actually my wife's money. <laughs> put, Very important put, put, put it in the bank, okay? And uh, I never spent any, any of it anyway because it was basically a contract shop, right? So it just sort of fed on itself. And at some point in time, there was this... Uh, uh, you know, sort of like mental shift when we said, well, look, we're not really going to just develop for customers. We're going to develop with customers, you know? Oh, and and uh, that was sort of, I remember that conversation as mm -hmm. we and were this talking. this is now Ring Central. This is still Ring Zero. Okay. So Ring Central was a different thing. So Ring okay. Central was a different thing. So Ring Central was saying, look. Which you started approximately when? Zero. Well, well, <laughs> uh, seriously, <laughs> not... I mean, seriously started, not... Uh, yeah, uh, there was a bit of a transitionary period. You know, 2003, okay. let's say. Okay, so, what, nine years, yeah. Uh, and uh, so, so, so what's the question? So the question is how hard was it to sort of, to, to do this? Um, you know, I don't remember. You know, it was uh, it, it it was uh, uh, it wasn't very hard because we believed in the market. We really did believe in the market. We really did believe in our understanding of the market, right? Because we were the guys who you know shipped 25 million units. The you know the CTO, the technical team, and all of that pretty much you know it was a small team but you know predated mm -hmm. you know this uh, right. you know th this new venture they knew what they were doing so they knew what they were doing you know uh, i had no idea what i was doing right because my entire thing prior was the oem channel and selling you know through computer manufacturers but really meaning to computer manufacturers and uh, with ring central specifically did not want to do that so sort of been there done that so i wanted to have a direct to customer uh, relationship. I wanted to have a direct billing relationship. I specifically did not want to have a small number of very large customers. I wanted to have a very large number of hopefully very large customers, but at least a very large number of customers. Um, so, but, uh, you know, uh, it was, you know, it was a technical team. So developing the product came naturally. And then there was a lot of learning underway, you know. Um, when did you know it was time to start hunting out venture capital or any other kind of funding? Well, when, when do you decide? When do you know when you're Yeah, that's an excellent, excellent question. Uh, so first, we did it too late, okay? Uh, next time around, you know, if there is one, I, I would do it earlier. I would not do it very early, you know? Mm -hmm. So many people don't do anything until they raise money. I think it's really, really wrong, you know? So I would, so if this is my one piece of advice is mm -hmm. if you believe it, you know, roll it, you know, see, 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 see how far you can get it. But, you know, we waited, uh, you know, we got 
funded in uh, late 06, like in December of 06, you know, so it's really just been five years. And, uh, you know, in five years, we grew like 30x, you know, and, and, and we had like revenues coming yeah. in. So I'm sort of tempted to believe that if we were to do it maybe three years prior, you know, it'd be. And you were funded by the big guys. Uh, yeah. Like Sequoia, Kostla, etc. How yeah. did you know, how, how does one know whom to approach? Is it because you have friends yeah. in the industry, they already, you're already, obviously you're already known, you've already been successful once by selling to Motorola. How do you know whom to approach? So, <laughs> okay. And if you have a story, that so would be better. There is, yeah, there is, there is a story, you know. So I didn't approach them. You know, because I am ex I am an extremely lazy person, and I'm just like not approaching people. You know, no, we were just doing our own thing, but it did sort of put some feelers out. So, so why? So, question. So, first question is like serious, right? Why? Why? Why, why is this? Sh and it was like a big decision, right? Because like I've done a company before. I did okay, you know, but it wasn't a Skype, you know. Exactly. So, uh, at some point in time, I sort of realized two things: that one, the market is really big, and I cannot stress this enough. If there is a big market, mm -hmm. you know, then you probably want to sort of organize a big ship, to, you know, to, to, to go after it, right? So, so, uh, so there was that realization, and uh, so a couple of things happened. So one is, at a very sort of basic level, you know, I was running out of money. You know, like I, I was writing checks, I was angel funding it, uh, but, you know, I did not sell Skype, you know, so funds were limited, and it was beginning, becoming sort of pretty painful. The other thing that was obvious is that customers were ba buying, and not canceling at a rate that exceeded their them buying into the product, you know? So, so good, so basically there was traction, right? And then, you know, what I sort of thought to myself is, you know, you live once, you know, here's an interesting opportunity, uh, why, not, why not leverage it, you know? And uh, why not do a world-class, you know, product, you know? And to do a world-class product, you know, you need world-class people. So if we were to do a round, let's do it with the best of the best. Now, having said that, uh, I didn't feel that just me getting on the phone calling people would, would be great, you know. I'm not, you know, a great door open, and at least I didn't feel I was. So just sort of let some people know that we're looking, and um, we got a couple of calls, yeah. Wow. That's the story. To you, audience, do you have a question? <coughs> sure. So you said uh, you want to get funding and, and from 2006 is when we were sort of talking negotiating. A lot of VOIP was happening. So there was a lot of consumer side VOIP. There was companies like. You know, lots of them. Even Skype, Vonage, sure. Yeah. So there was a lot of flux in VOIP, and so what made you stand out? So a couple of things. So. Uh, a uh, couple of things did. So one is uh, we never ever presented ourselves as a VOP company or as a PSTN company or as a company that happens to be using Oracle databases. All of these are technologies. And uh, from day one, our positioning and sort of the way we thought of ourselves was not that we're delivering developing or deliv and delivering a certain technology to the market, the positioning and thinking was we're delivering a solution, a product. We didn't care whether it used, again, VoIP, you know, TDM, whatever it is, all right? Uh, so I never positioned it that way. And that question was asked by each and every investor, you know, and with that, you know, we had like four rounds, right? So everyone has that, and you know, we're not a VoIP company. We work with VoIP, without VoIP. Um, Whatever comes in afterwards, you know, we'll work with that. But from the beginning, you were a B2B company? We were from the beginning, we were a B2B company, but it's very different from being a VOAP company. Okay. Anyone else? Go ahead. So, um, you, you just said that if you weren't a voice, a voice over IP didn't exist or wasn't around, then you would have been something else. And I'm, <coughs> I'm just sort of uh, trying to understand how a company can make those drastic changes? What is it about your mentality or about your attitude that allows you to deal with those sort of changing market circumstances? I mean, I can't imagine a company like at t saying that it wouldn't be a telco company. I'm not saying we wouldn't be, you know, a telco or whatever we are. Uh, 
No, I think the, I was actually making a slightly different point. The point was that when we presented and present our solution and our value, we never concentrate on the let's see, on the technology that it's based on. We we st we actually actually, if anything, we stay the course. We're just using whatever technology or technologies make sense at the moment. Does that make sense? And what else? Right now? Okay, so how hard was it to hire the right people? Today I was, it was, I was at a funny lecture at Stanford and there was a guy who was just starting a startup. He used to be a VC at Draper Fisher Jurvetson and he hired people that he went to school with as an undergraduate at Stanford. Not the ones in between. The question is, who did you reach out to? How did you know whom to hire and that you made the right decision? And then how hard is it to retain them? The first the people I went to school with are way too old to hire at this point, so <laughs> not going to, that wasn't going to happen, you know. Look, uh, so so you know what? Let me let me uh, let me actually answer a different question. Sure. Okay. Which a different question would sure. be uh, who are the right, the right people to hire? Mm -hmm. Because yes. I think that that's maybe a better question, uh, and and then I'll answer yours, right? And uh, so, firstly, who the right people are really changes as the company matures. And people who were right for us when there were two of us, and we started with two guys, both named Vlad, okay? Uh, that was very different, you know? So we needed people who could sort of do all things, you know? So we needed one of us to do all things technical, and the other one, namely me, do all things less technical, which were also technical. But look, as the company grows, right? So again, you, we, we started, you, you need generalists, Mm -hmm. Initially, you need generalists and uh, sort of people with, you know, guerrilla fighter mentality and no holds barred. And, uh, you know, there are some Russian speakers here, I hope. So Lots. Lots. Okay. No partisans, you know, And uh, everybody is, you know, is a... Um, uh, is a one-man army or one-woman army. So initially, we needed those people. As we matured and as are maturing, we get we, we transition from you know a band of generalists to you know a somewhat organized troop of specialists. So uh, and it's a completely different it's a completely different situation. So now we have people you know five or fifteen people doing the job that one person used to do. Mm -hmm. But they're doing it way, way, way better, each and every individual part. It's more expensive, but the end result is hopefully world class. Uh, now, how the hell do you find them, all right? right. So, uh, initially, so... I mean, the good news in America, you can find them and fire them. So at least you're not in Europe where you're really bound to, you find them and you got to stick to them. Yeah, but there are obviously expenses involved, there are opportunity costs, you know, you train them and then they leave, it's like there are all kinds of things, you know, so you, you sort of, you know, want to want to be diligent about it. Uh, look, I don't have a great answer, you know, like at this point, you know, we deal with lots of agencies, you know, we have, you know, word of mouth, you know, we try to have sort of people happy, you know, there are some people here from our company, so ho hopefully they'll agree, but we try to keep them sort of in, you know, good, good humors and happy. They and said very nice things about you. Uh, you know, well, that, that was training, you know. I know. <laughs> you trained them, you know. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, so, so our original team was uh, basically a bunch of Russian guys, uh, which was accidental because I came here really early. I came here in the 70s as, as a kid. Oh. I actually didn't know other Russian engineers, uh, you know, uh, professionally certainly didn't know them. And it just so happened that somebody referred somebody and they knew some people and we were in the sort of offshoring mode before there was offshoring, mm -hmm. just like we were in the cloud before there was cloud. Anyone have a question? Uh. Go ahead. <clears throat> yeah, please. Um, sort of continue on the uh, sort of little retrospective in the 90s, you know, that many uh, businesses, you know, went to the business model just by having the E to their physics, you know, E pads, so anything, right? Some of them survived, some of them didn't, and uh, not exactly, but somewhat similar these days when everybody goes into cloud or as a service, right? So, given the market condition, what do you think? Um, really distinguishes you from, you know, part of my ignorance, PBS as a service kind of statement. Why, why do you think your, your model is valid and, you know, curious thing? So, uh, 
I got this sort of guy I know, sort of a friend, but not a very close friend, right? And actually, we had almost an identical conversation a couple of months ago, which is he met me at a party, and uh, he, he thinks he's a potential customer, which he, he actually, he's a CIO at some company. Yeah? And he goes, well, how are you guys different, uh, you know, from, uh, I forget, he didn't say PBX as a service, but something similar, for hosted PBX. How are you different from hosted PBX? And I go, well, no, it's like, depends, you know, what do you mean by hosted PBX? He goes, well, for example, how are you different from Ring Central? I go, we're really not different from Ring Central. <laughs> <laughs> That's Ring right. Central, us. That's Look, we cool. we are the host at PBX, you know, in your. So no, we're not, you know. <laughs> this is a true story. I, I, I could not make so it nobody, up. I, no, you couldn't. <laughs> you know. Um, a question in a similar vein. Uh, we deal with a lot of minutes aggregators, people that are, you know, basically. I'm sorry, what kind of aggregators? Minutes, minutes yeah. aggregators, Thank people you. that buy telephony minutes from a really large carrier and resell it to other people. Thank you. And as uh, as time goes by, the costs are really, really, really dropping, and we believe that eventually those costs for voice delivery are going to be close to zero. <coughs> yep. How do you see Ring Central poised to evolve with the world as that change takes place? No, that's great for us, right? Because we consume those minutes, so our uh, cost of goods, yeah includes those, so the cheaper that price, the better off we are, right? Because again, remember, we're selling value, we're not reselling yeah, minutes. More like application delivery as opposed to just voice delivery? Um, delivering that's my whole point. We were never in, we were not and are not in the voice delivery business. Skype is in the voice delivery business. We're not, Vanish is in the voice delivery business. You want to then maybe explain, although we didn't really cover that really, yeah. what is your... The sector that you are sure. controlling. Sure, sure, sure. So uh, if you think about it, uh, if you look at a, so firstly we sell to businesses. Okay. Yeah. So uh, if you think sort of a standard sort of business, so what's the pro what, what is the problem that we're trying to solve? Let's talk about right. that. So the problem we're trying to solve is there could be a person, single person, uh, or more likely a group of people who want to come across as a business entity, right? And it could be, you know, again, an individual which all of a sudden, you know, something clicks, you know, in your head and you go, well, you know, I'm not, you know, Joe, you know, uh, you know, John Doe, whatever, you know, I'm now Acme Consulting, right? So at that point in time, you need to present the business identity. That's Ring Central. So we will have your phone answer not as I'm Joe, you know, I'm Jane, but I'm business such and such. Now, a more interesting case for us is when there is a group of people. So it could be a small company, you know, five people. It could be a medium-sized company, 50 people. It could be a sizable company, you know, 500 people. You know, we have customers across all of those, right? And so what do people usually do there, right? So people usually have a PBX, right, a box, mm -hmm. which sits there in the closet somewhere, and somebody, and nobody knows about it, nobody likes it. Um, nobody understands it, right? So somehow it needs to be, uh, you know, maintained and fed and all right, whatever, right? And uh, we take that away. So we take that box into the cloud. So that's, that, that's the difference, that's the value. So what I'm competing with, I'm not competing with telcos, actually I'm partnering with telcos. I'm competing. Well, Broadsoft is interesting. Uh, yeah, so Broadsoft is selling uh, to to carriers. So I got a story on Broadsoft. Okay, got, remember, you know, so we go back a while, right? So I was uh, having a chat with a gentleman by the name of David Ladd, uh, who was uh, a partner at um, uh, Mayfield, and this was. Back, back then, right? And uh, we were talking about Ring Central, and uh, I was sort of gently suggesting that perhaps they should, you know, invest. You know, again, <laughs> this is not me chasing them, but we were, you know, we happen to be talking. And he said, no, 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 no way, because we're doing cilantro, you know? And I was, that's great, you know? So what's cilantro? So cilantro is something that direct competitor to Broadsoft. And by the way, for those of you who don't know this name, like you seem to be in the field, but Broadsoft uh, has what, we would call a soft switch, so it's basically a bunch of software that they license to uh, major carriers. So almost every major carrier in the world now has um, 
broad soft software installed, they manage it, they maintain it, etc. And they use it, so you, they used to buy from Nortel and from Lucent, that was millions of dollars, and now they can buy from Broadsoft, which is also millions of dollars, but it's a little bit more incremental and it's a little bit more under carrier's control. So anyway, we had this conversation, and you know, so he said, like, uh, so anyway, so Cilantro was a direct competitor, he said, no, we're doing them, you know. And they go, okay, well, let's go to market there, and he goes, well, you know, so they're going to sell to carriers, and they'll make a lot of money. I go, well, that's great, you know, but tell me this, you know, what exactly will happen if carriers will not buy? <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> and uh, you know, so that's that's been the differentiator for us, right? Is uh, we we always went direct, and uh, you know, it so happens that Cilantro didn't do well, Broadsoft did do extremely well, you know, uh, but we have accounts in common. You know, AT and T is a customer of theirs, customer of ours. They they tend to position uh, in larger for larger businesses. We tend to position for smaller businesses. Thank you very much. So you mentioned that you know early on the kind of person that you needed in a thriving company was one kind, and today it's a different kind. You are still there. So help us understand what kind of um, changes, thinking changes, mindset changes you've had to adapt yourself as your company grows, and what do you think is still sort of challenging as you keep going? Okay, so remember how it was supposed to be easy questions, this is going to be a relaxing <laughs> evening. Okay. I wrote so we talked about that. Right? about <laughs> Wonderful Good question. Wonderful question. Yes. Okay, so I'm not immune to any of that, okay? So, uh, so first, I have changed a lot. And it is a work in progress, and hopefully it will never stop, because once it stops, you die, and that's not a good thing, okay? <laughs> so, uh, but it's the same thing. Again, you change from, firstly, you do everything yourself, like I used to, okay? to you lead, uh, and lead is a, um, you know, it's an interesting notion with, given the cast of characters, okay? But you sort of, you know, uh, you know try to lead uh, a small group of people who are all very strong individually, right? Uh, and can do a lot of things. And, you know, we change from that to, you know, trying to build a world-class company. It's, 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 a, it's a different job. It's not better or worse, it's, a, it's just a different job, you know? Um, again, the biggest, I don't know what's a good example here, you know, it, it's like, I don't know, if, like, if people are into cars or whatever, you know, b building, uh, you know, a, you know, a one-off racer, you know? Use a nice German car as an example. <laughs> like Porsche? Uh, well, I got one. You know, I know so, you do. Yeah. I know you do. Okay, you know, but uh, yeah, so so Maybach, you know, Maybach, they're just they're, they're just closing that one down, you know. So okay. so anyway, um, uh, I, I don't know if I'm really getting across th th this one, but it's uh, the, the 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 big mental shift, at least to me, was: Are we doing something which is good enough to? Uh, are we, so so a couple of things. So are we doing something that is good enough given resources at hand? Approach A, completely viable, okay? Lots of people do that. Two, are we doing something that is world-class uh, championship level and we will acquire uh, or attract whatever resources we need to get us there? Mm -hmm. Two different things. And again, I really want to stress, both are viable. But if you need, if, you're, if your goal at some whatever stage in your life is to do something that is world class, then chances are you need to sort of learn how to acquire those resources and deal with the people who make those resources available to you. Do you have any special plans about the future? Like what is your vision for tomorrow? For yourself and your company or companies? The question like, was, does, she have, does he have any visions for the, the company for the future? So for me or for the company? or you and your Both, company, right? Company. Yeah. Uh, well, hopefully there is a future, you know. So like I, <laughs> I, I, I hope to wake up, you know, for a number of more mornings and all of that. Uh, well, look, so I, I continue to believe in this market that we're in, right? So the market is uh, every business in the world sort of at, uh, you know, uh, 
potentially as big as every business in the world, certainly every small business in the world. And we can sort of debate what small is, whether it's 20 or 50 or 200, I don't know, you know. But it's a big, huge, you know, hundreds of, you know, I don't know if hundreds of billions, but maybe like a hundred billion dollar worldwide opportunity. So uh, it can, you know, keep me busy, you know. We're not anywhere close to sort of, you know, having made a sizable dent there. Um, so you didn't, you know, I go to a lot of these events where they say, well, you just have to pivot and iterate and pivot and all that. It seems you did not pivot a lot. You kind of knew where you were going and you went for it. Well, uh, you know, so how many people here snowboard or ski or something? I don't know. Like, if you don't pivot, you know, you'll fall. <laughs> you know? So you have to pivot. <laughs> you, know? you have to do this, but you still have to, like, know where you're going. You know, you can't, you know, you, you have no to make small, change. you have to make small turns, right? But, like, if you were to get there halfway, and you don't know what, what that halfway is, because, like, you're really chasing the horizon, you know, and you will say, ah, no, this is not so good, I'm going to change. That, that's not great. Right. So I would, I would guard against that. Because there will be many people, you know, who will from, you know, the very best of intentions, give you advice that would involve more than a pivot and more of a turnaround, reversal. Exactly. And I would, you know, be, uh, think long and hard before you take that. Assuming you believe in, in what you do. So one of the things someone asked me, so what are the five, three to five, distinct events or decisions that you made that defined your success? That's a tough one. <sighs> Uh, well, look, obviously one is to launch, to launch onto this, right? So I assume there are entrepreneurs here and people have done this, you know, I'm not hopefully the only person here who has done it or is thinking, at least thought about it. And, you know, it involves, you know, writing a check, and, like opening up a bank account and taking some of your personal funds, you know, putting it there and maybe you see it, maybe you don't, you know, right? Mm -hmm. So. More importantly, it so involves... Facing risk, in other words. So, there, yeah, you know, you take on some personal risks, right? Then you get some other people and they believe in you and you sort of don't want to let them down and you have to convince them and then once they're in, you know, you have to sort of keep the fire on. So those are all uh, sort of... So, so the genesis part was obviously mm -hmm. sort of one, you know, uh, one such point. Look, obviously for us, uh, this institutional funding and Sequoia and Vinod Kostler coming in, you know, that, that, that was a big deal. You yes. know, the company yeah. has changed yeah. substantially. So that's number two, you know. Uh, was, that, was that something you would say that you did, something you were able to bring about, or was it a, a marriage of good events? You had a good product, good ideas, you knew good people, and it kind of happened? Well, I mean, it happened. I don't know, you know, kinda. I don't know how to define kinda, you know. I mean, at Sequoia, I, I, at, at, at Sequoia, no, but no, at Sequoia we had seven meetings, you know, and uh, honestly, the last time I came, I said, look, I'm happy to be here literally every day. I just need a parking spot because like, I keep searching the building, you know, like to do something, uh, you know. So I don't know about kinda, you know. I know it's a lot of hard work, you know, but, um, uh, but um, you know, it, it is a seminal event, yeah. So when you take... Uh, Can I ask how much you got funded for? We got, well, over time, you know, it's like tens of millions of dollars. <coughs> you know, it's pretty, pretty sizable. You know, initial round was a little bit over 10. So. Wow. Uh, but, good. yeah, uh, no, not too much. <laughs> no, don't, don't take, don't, take as little as you can. Yeah. Don't, don't, you know, because... If, you if, want to elaborate on that? Because that, I think that's more, yeah. more of a modern approach to Which? VC funding. Take as little... Yeah. Do you want to elaborate on that a little bit? Well, so a couple of things. So firstly, uh, if you take one dollar, you've mortgaged your soul. So your company is not 100% your company. That's with one dollar. So from that perspective, taking one dollar or a million dollars, you know, or if you can do a hundred million dollars, you know, is all the same, right? Now, having said, said that, um, you know, leave some uh, firepower, you know, it depends, it depends on the situation, it depends on the business you're in, you know, it depends on many things, you know, but uh, try to make sure that when it's all said and done, that you still have something left, because they're very happy to take it all. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Questions from you? Yeah. Um, yeah, intriguing is that the, the market you are servicing um, is a very expensive market to for most people to service, especially the lower end of it. And I'm just wondering, are you looking at partnerships for ways to expand the amount of revenue 
because of the high cost of sales of penetrating the smaller market, the, the large number of smaller customers. Yeah, <laughs> so to be clear, we never had sales and we do not have sales. Uh, as I mean, we have sales as in revenues coming in, but we don't have sales people. Okay, know. right. So uh, we, from day one, and p this was partly just because of lack of fu funding, right? Salespeople are expensive, and uh -huh. maybe they bring you money, maybe they don't, right? So from day one, we were we were we we're going to get there without salespeople. So what does that entail? So we were fortunate that Google came about. So and Google generates, you know, as we all know, there is, you know, there is a reason they're worth two hundred million, uh, two hundred billion dollars, yeah, uh, which is a make your whatever wares accessible uh, to what's known as a long tail, right? So all of the small businesses can all of a sudden, you know, see what you've got. So we just rolled that wave. We were there very, very early. I actually got an original blanket, a black blanket from Google as a, as a thank you for being one of their first customers. Oh, how wonderful. <laughs> I, won't I, don't, I don't know why a blanket. No, it's a blanket. It's like, it's like too big to frame. But, but still, there is, there is an ability potentially to harvest the install base in of course. way. Partnerships or thoughts on that question? Yeah, your, uh, the, the, the cheapest dollar you can bring into the company in revenue is a dollar from an existing customer. Exactly. Yeah. Absolutely, right. So, of course, right. And that means that you should have, you know, pretty good relations with your customers, relationships, and uh, hopefully they'll be willing to part with more dollars. You know, I mean, we have an example, just recent example, right, uh, is uh, a customer came in and they ordered two lines. That's great, you know, we're like not, you know, not proud, two lines is good, you know. And then they ordered 20 more lines, and then they ordered 200 more lines, and then they again ordered 200 more lines. I don't know how many people they have, you know, <laughs> maybe, you know, I'm sort of getting used to it now. So you never know, you know, a small customer can become very, very important. Go ahead. Um, some HR question. Um, so approximately how many engineers do you have now? I think that geographic distributor because of short development facilities. How do you keep uh, people motivated, you know, staying yeah, with sure. you, buying into your ideas when they don't get to work with what well, specifically but leadership every day? How do you keep them, you know, up and running? Well, that's a positive, right? They don't have to work with me is a good thing, right? Uh, <laughs> but, okay, so a couple of questions there, right? So how many engineers, so I don't know, de developers, QA engineers, you know, how do you count, you know? Uh, overall, a couple of hundred at this point, you know? Uh, it started out with a uh, couple of dozen, probably, initially, uh, offshore, you know? Um, Okay, so that's one question. As far as how do you keep them motivated? Um, so, you know, we give them a uh, sense of purpose, hopefully. You know, I mean, they uh, hopefully like what they're working on. Uh, generally speaking, what I find is that people uh, tend to want to excel at things, you know? And uh, once we sort of came out and said out loud that, hey, this is going to be a world-class property that you're building, people started more or less lining up because everyone wants to work on a world-class property, you know? So I've watched you guys for, it seems like forever, and I, I always ask myself why no one has acquired your company. Is it just a unwillingness to sell? Why hasn't anybody acquired you? And second, what was the closest, if at all, that you've ever come to being acquired? Did you all hear the question? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like our company specifically. Well, so the first company did get acquired, right? So the Motorola. Oh, gosh. Uh, so it's a little bit hard to acquire us because we have no idea what we're worth, you know? Because we are, no, no, like jokes aside, you know, it's we are in this $100 billion market and the market overall penetration of the entire market, like all of the competitors together, maybe like 2% or something, you know? So, okay, maybe 5%, I don't know, you know, but it's, uh, it, it's too early, you know? So I don't know. But has anybody ever tried to acquire you? I imagine somebody has at some point. <sighs> I mean, yeah, I mean, people, people approach us all the time, you know, but it's like, like dating, you know, like if they can clearly see that we're just not <laughs> going there. 
<laughs> and now, you know. <laughs> Go ahead. Please. I'm, I'm interested in how you went from that couple of dozen engineers, mm -hmm. sort of like that very initial hub, up to a 300 person organization, right? And you maintain that culture and maintain that level of mm -hmm. excellence and sort of like, because we're, we're going through this right now ourselves, how, how do you go from this whole like, mm -hmm. generalist approach into these specialized fields without people feeling like they're being, you know, taken over, their areas are being taken over because there's a lot of that type of feeling and emotions that go on and, and sort of how do you build that entire structure that maintains? Is it you bring someone who operationally is just excellent with this and just bang, 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 sets it all up? Or is it sort of a gradual flow? What's the vision that guides that hiring process? Just the entire <coughs> metamorphosis that happens. Yeah. So, okay. So firstly, we did not maintain the level of excellence. Uh, I would like to think that we vastly improved the level of excellence, okay. right? Again, by applying substantially greater resources to it. Okay. So that's number one. Uh, number two, uh, so actually people ask me, like, I, I even had that question fairly recently from one of the people at the company, and the person was concerned, he says, well, you know, there are some old timers here, you know, and like, how do I deal with them? What happens if they're good enough, you know? So I'll give you the same answer I gave him, you know, which is, look, there are no sacred cows, right? And uh, if you're holding on to a person uh, just for the sake of tenure, of that person, you know, I mean, there, there is a reason why we're in the U.S. and, you know, you can relate and not in Germany or, you know, Holland or something, which are wonderful places to be, you know, like all kinds of reasons to be there. But, uh, you know, I mean, we don't have the labor laws that are that oppressive. So the, 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 the answer I gave is that, look, you know, how is this fair to everyone else and to you personally and you know for that matter to your wife and your family that I know you're skip, skimping on them because you're here with me and it's 8 p.m. now, you know? And how is it fair to all of us if you have a weak player, you know? So go deal with it, you know, you can find a different job, do. If you can't, okay, you know, it's, it's a free country and, you know, there are, I'm sure there are lots of but places that would like to, yeah. Is it hard to hang on to the engineers with places like Google, Facebook, et cetera, et cetera? Really I mean, knock on wood, you know. No, I, well, I don't know. Like, people, people don't don't seem to leave. You know, <laughs> I don't know. He's doing something right. Uh, 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 look, we we try to not. Well, first of all, we're underpaid to begin with. You know, so if they say that they're getting top dollar, you know, like we're just not getting that mentality. They, we, we never, they never even start with us. You know, uh, but. Uh, Again, these are people who like what they do and they like the environment and we try to be diligent. And especially with engineers, we seem to have a pretty good track record. You know, maybe it's because we and the CTO have been at it for so damn long, you know. Uh, with some of the other disciplines, it's more of a, you know, more of a learning experience and, uh, you know, hopefully we'll, we'll get a better hang of it too. But overall, you know, we're you know, sort of holding our own. You know, I can tell you that more people join us from some of these better known companies that leave us, you know, so, for them. It's very interesting. Sure. Do, you, uh, do you fear the telecoms, like the large telecoms? I'm sorry, I couldn't understand your question. I couldn't hear it. Do, do you fear large telecoms? Oh, okay. And just thrown out of uh, Yeah, look, I mean, it's like, you know, death and taxes, you know, like it's going to happen, right? <laughs> Large tell you deal with it, you know. So uh, we uh, so we deal with them, you know. So uh, we try to stay close to them. Uh, so we have two large telecoms who are uh, customers and channel partners of ours, and that's AT and T and Rogers, which is a big uh, mobile carrier in Canada. Uh, do we fear them in the sense can they hurt us? They can absolutely hurt us, you know. Uh, but uh, you know. I don't know. You ride your car in the street, you know. Do you fear, you know, a big semi truck, you know, that's, you know, 16 wheeler? Yeah, I mean, you try to sort of not get in this way, right? <laughs> Wait, yeah. Sorry, you had a question. Uh, yeah, you did. It was, it was back to um, yeah. the, the team of engineers that you're, that you're keeping. Uh, one of the things that I read about, about uh, Ring Central before coming here was uh, uh, that part of the philosophy was no bullshit and no yawns. So I was wondering if maybe that was someone being colorful with the writing or whether you, you mentioned that as, uh, as part of your philosophy. Yeah. Yeah, no, I, uh, that's, I, I meant it, yeah. That's my quote and I, 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 do, I do mean it, you know. 
It does not apply to the CEO himself, by the way, I should say. <laughs> I am allowed to do both. <laughs> I didn't hear that. What's the quote? Pardon? Uh, you didn't hear what? The question or the answer? The, the quote. quote. The quote. Oh, the quote. Uh, no bullshit no and what? No, no, no yawns. yawns. No yawns. Uh, yeah. Do so that's. Do you have, that's, that's have another more interesting version? Please. This is not good enough, guys, you know? <laughs> <laughs> it took me 20 years to come up with that one, you know? Yeah. <laughs> right. Okay, I'm sorry, there were more questions, please. Um, many, many companies that go after the SME market choose to do it through partnerships with whatever service providers that already have businesses with, with, with the SME and the companies. That, you know, Seattle-based Parallels works through 800 service providers to deliver the software solution. What are your thoughts on partnerships? Have you considered a partnership strategy? Versus direct, direct so as I mentioned, right, so we are working with AT&T, we are working with Rogers, we are, you know, working with a number of other carriers I can, you know, discuss here. So yeah, absolutely we have considered. Uh, as I also mentioned, uh, I, my first business was entirely partnership based. So we had no direct access to the end user. Okay, and uh, so the way I thought about it, my silly little analogy maybe is like, you know, riding like at a rodeo, riding a wild bull. Not that I've ever done that myself, but I, how I would imagine, you can, if you're really good, you can stay on for a while, eventually get thrown. I mean, the bull is just stronger than you are, okay? And that's how I feel about this, you know, is can you build a really successful company? And Parallels is a fantastic company, okay? Can you build a really successful high revenue company on this, what I would call OEM or partnership model? Clearly you can. What we're trying to do is build something like a Salesforce.com. Maybe something, I don't know if Google may be too big, but you understand, we're trying to build an, at least a national brand. Can you do a national brand through those partnerships? Maybe, I don't, I don't know. To me, a direct pass to customer seemed like a, like a, like a, like a safer way to go, let's say. Yeah. So, a question about building a national brand. Um, you mentioned going direct, you mentioned going Google, you mentioned inbound marketing, so I assume you generated quite a lot of leads from the SEM initially. As you go in national, that's going to dry out. So, how do you scale beyond that while still maintaining profitability. What's your <coughs> recent sources of those leads and what are your next sources? What is gonna make you a billion dollar company? Where are you gonna drive them? Yeah. So again, firstly let's get back to the market. So and overall penetration. So overall penetration is tiny, okay, and the market is huge. So uh, is it eventually going to dry up? Yeah, and the sun is going to cool. We're a long way from that, okay? <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's number one. Like seriously, we're seeing an upswing and it's curving up, not down. And especially since, you know, you drive up and down, you know, 101 and every second billboard says cloud in it. And our first billboard just got up on 101 and even our, our, our billboard also says cloud. <laughs> even though it was an afterthought, so it's like just sort of handwritten there. So go, go check it out. So look, there is a way better adoption of this cloud mentality and more and more people are just sort of buying into the notion. So that's coming up. Um, there is the international aspect of it. So we're today in US, UK, a little bit in UK and in Canada. Well, that's a small part of the world. You know, obviously there are other opportunities. And then there's uh, a whole bunch of activities that one can do outside of SEM. But having said that, like for those of you who are close to this, SEM is your second cheapest source of customers and source of revenue is SEM. Your first cheapest is your own customer base. If you're smart enough, like Skype, and for example, we were not and are not. But if you can do something as viral as Skype, more power to you, you'll be worth seven and a half billion dollars. Yeah. Well, you started your business with another Vlad. Uh, how, uh, and I understand you're still in partnership with him, right? So how did that relationship survive so long and how do you make decisions together and kind of still? Question from Vlad. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and like, you have the division of 
labor or or you for every major decision you need to have a consensus on that. Well, I mean, she does the labor part, you know, <laughs> the talks, you know. So again, uh, so he's a CTO, yeah, so he's a key architect, uh, so I uh, will advise and opine, but I will generally not uh, override key technical decisions, okay? Uh, he, I don't think he perceives himself as a sort of, as a business person, you know, so so the things like funding and investor relations and all of that and you know marketing whatever that that would be sort of more in my court so it's more it's it's complementary you know i mean do we fight absolutely we fight yeah but sometimes he's, you know sometimes i'm right let <laughs> yeah. me ask you what kind of mistakes did you make what kind of mistakes would you say in general here to the entrepreneurs things that you should have avoided Learned that passing on your wisdom to them. So I have a cop out to that, okay? And the cop out is this. I know, I know, okay. So I, I went to this. Uh, uh, I went to this event. So one of our investors is Vinod, is Kosla Ventures, right? Vinod Kosla, right? So Vinod's sort of a big guy, right? So for those of you who don't know that name, look it up, okay? But uh, he's, uh, you know, yeah, pretty famous person. And um, he has this personal friend of his by the name of Bill Gates, okay? So what he did is he organized this event with all of the portfolio companies, and it's a very large portfolio, and we all had the chance to have sort of this type of a, uh, you know, meeting with Bill Gates being in, in the seat, you know? So that was kind of interesting. So somebody asked that same question, right? And the question went, well, Bill, you know, what do you think about all the mistakes you made, and like, what would you do different, and so forth? So I'll just quote Bill's answer, and I'm no That's Bill, very okay? valid. And so Bill Gates' answer was, he said, yeah, we did all kinds of things wrong, you know? But you know, in the end, it kind of worked out. <laughs> <laughs> that was worth the question. Okay. <laughs> oh, yeah. anyway. Go ahead. Uh, what, do you, what do you think about Twilio? You think it's going to come into your business, what you're doing, and, and it, is it a paradigm shift? Uh, any opinions, thoughts? I'll tie it to the other question about carriers and telcos. I think Twilio should be really afraid of telcos. <laughs> uh, I don't know. Look, no, Twilio is an interesting company. Yeah, uh, Twilio is an interesting company. They clearly have a following. It's a very different business model from ours. So we provide end user package solution to, you know, a target customer. What Twilio does is they, my understanding is, they have a platform and it's a good platform. Uh, that a development house can build an innovative application or suite on, and uh, you know a company uh, did that and got acquired for what seventy five million dollars recently, so uh, there is clearly a lot of value there we 're just solving different problems uh, but, but I have to say to their credit okay is they also took a very distinctive approach to it as opposed to we are a VoIP company, we're reselling minutes, we're saving you on phone charges. They have absolutely, um, you know, defined sort of a value-added niche, which is different from everybody else, including from us, and, you know, more part of them. What about anything coming from the open source community? Uh, excuse me? Any, anything you see coming out of the open source community, something about Asterisk Well, I mean, we use open source as much as possible, you know. Uh, yeah, I mean, Asterisk in particular, uh, so remember, we, the first company predated Asterisk. I have, you know, sort of some fairly strong opinions about uh, telephony running on, on, you know, on PCs. Uh, so I just sort of don't believe in that whole approach. But uh, uh, if you're running a business, like for an, sort of what we would call enterprise implement, uh, an enterprise class, I think Asterisk is just fine. Not carrier class, you know, not multi tenant really. Okay, I still have a good one. Hold on, hold on. One, one more. Oh, no, you go ahead. You're, go ahead. I, I'll find mine again. You go yes. um, Other than the obvious, why did you put your support in sales reps in the Philippines? In where? In the, in the Philippines, in Manila. Well, how do you mean? Well, what do you mean, other yeah, than the obvious? Like your support there? Yeah, yeah, but also. other than the obvious, meaning what? Other than the obvious answer of it's cheap and low cost, is there any other reason? 
Do they speak English? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> cheap, cheap, speak English, good attitude, you know, sort of service oriented, sort of in a, you know, in a positive sort of spin of, of, of this. Um, yeah, I mean, they, um, you know, they can, you know, they're one of, sort of, one of key advantages we have is that we have, you know, sort of sizable, you know, call center in the Philippines, and it's doing really, really well, you know, and uh, we have, it's amazing, I went there for a Christmas party, you know, and there was this huge, like, room, you know, not a room, like, a, you know, pavilion, you know, and uh, it was really scary, and they go, like, do you realize that, you know, you're, like, one of the better known Philippines companies? And I go, I, like, I never thought of myself as, as, a, as a Philippine, you know, company, you know. <laughs> but, yeah, they, but maybe that's, maybe that's part of sort of the secret sauce, too, is, you know, we try to make people like it's their company, whether it's Philippines or, you know, St. Petersburg or, you know, we just opened up an office in China. It was wild, they went to China, you know, someone from Odessa, I don't know if those of you know, and the other Vlad is from St. Petersburg, right? So you go into this office in China, you know? Where? In the, in Shaman. Sure. Shaman, which is an island way, way down south. But it's an island that's like really close to mainland, so it's swimmable, mm -hmm. basically. Is it uh, swimmable? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> I just had to make sure. That's yeah, it is memorable. Okay. Uh, but uh, we come in and they have two conference rooms, you know, and one's Odessa, the other one is St. Petersburg. So, <laughs> so, 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 so that was fine. Yeah. Uh, talk a little about, about your board. Um, how do you leverage them, uh, you know, to the max, and how do you avoid issues? Well, I don't know if I avoid issues, number one. But, uh, so, but let's start with leverage. So they're really, really useful. So this is one of the reasons, and I didn't know, right, because this is sort of my first real board. I, I didn't know. I just ha had this sort of vague idea that, hey, you know, if this team sort of, you know, Sequoia and Kosla, but Kosla was from Kleiner, basically, you know. So in my mind, it was sort of the same team that funded Google, you know, and here we got sort of the same people. Maybe something good will happen. And lots of really good things did happen, you know. So they know people, you know. So whenever you need an introduction, you know, I just go to them like I don't think about things. Uh, doors get opened, you know. They have personal uh, relationships with people that I could never get to otherwise. Uh, they have general uh, business advice, uh, which is which I find incredibly useful. Uh, you know, uh, they've seen lots of companies do well. It, including people like Google and YouTube and, you know, uh, you know, Facebook and so forth, right? Uh, and they've seen lots of companies fail, you know, so that's just invaluable. So you go to them for advice. Um, you know, how do, do you avoid conflict? Um, look, people have different styles, you know. I, I, I try to sort of have a fairly clear demarcation line. To, which is, here's a strategy, and this is what we get to discuss together with you, dear board, you know, and here's advice where I'm going out like this and like, okay, I need help, you know. And then there is running the company, and uh, if you want to run the company, you know, be my guest, but then, you know, we're not going to be both running the company at the same time. So I, for example, am very happy to do that swim from Shaman to mm -hmm. mainland and back, and I'd be happy to. Yeah. The pricing strategy? Well, you know, uh, uh, you know, no, great question, right? So it's it's a moving target, right? So we see what the competition is doing and how they're positioning and so forth. Uh, so there are sort of some some you know some maxims that we follow. So we try to not nickel and dime. We try to have sort of an all-inclusive pricing and make it simple for people. And, you know, one thing I ask myself is, if I'm a consumer, if I'm a customer of ours, how would I like this? You know, would I understand it, you know? Uh, would I, you know, care, you know? So, so we try to do that. Now, having said that, you know, we do a lot of price testing, you know, and we will, you know, try to bump it up a few dollars and see what happens, and, you know, sort of the classical, you know. You, you, don't, you just don't know the elasticity, you know? Different, you know, and I hear, by the way, uh, just, you know, maybe a little bit uh, to follow up is, uh, 
I hear of people uh, saying that, uh, you know, in many cases it's very much counterintuitive where you can raise the price and actually get more customers. And we weren't lucky enough to really have experience firsthand, but I absolutely do know of companies that, that saw that, you know. So it just depends. It depends on the value you provide, I think. Sorry, please. Just to continue on the question, uh, so, since you don't have a sales force per se, and um, you know, like we have all the flyers for one month free, so would you say that your solution basically sells itself? So basically, you turn users into customers. That's how you get people in. And you just try it for free, and like it, love it, and you just uh, start. So, so, so to be clear, we started out with no sales force, and we still have no outside or field sales, we do have inside sales. So the way it works now is uh, you can uh, buy from the web and you can actually complete the transaction. But again, in the example I gave, if you have you know a 400 line account, you absolutely get engaged with the salesperson. The only thing is that salesperson you know, didn't call you first, just like me with those VCs. You call that salesperson, but then there is a process that follows. You know. Was that the question? More or less, yeah. yeah. So I have a question too. Yeah. Is running a successful company like yours skill, luck, or timing? Or all of them? Well, I can assure you it's not skill. <laughs> no, it has to be. It has to be. Uh, oh, I don't know. Oh, uh, gosh. Um, is it skill, luck, or timing? Or all of them? Well, yeah, no, it's all of them, of course, you know, like, no luck, you know, no luck, no good, you know, and... Uh, no, I didn't understand, so luck, I mean, of I've, course, I've luck. talked to lots of CEOs yeah. in the past, and they've said luck absolutely has... That's to what I'm saying, okay. right, no luck, no company, you okay. know, I had, uh, uh, so prior to this round we did, okay, to share a little bit of a personal, you know, history, is I had a little bit of bad luck in falling from a mountain bike and shattering my hip here, you know, and I don't know if it was related or not, but, uh, you know, that round didn't close, you know? Like, I was in the hospital and, like, things weren't good, so that wasn't great luck, you know? So, yeah, luck matters a lot. Finding right people matter a lot, you know? That's lucky, you know? And having that right person, you know, be available for you at that time as opposed to, you know, going to Facebook, you know, that's, that's mm -hmm. a lot of luck, of course, you know? Um, yeah, uh, you know, timing, yeah, I mean, you know, you have to, timing is kind of funny, you know, I feel a little bit sort of, you know, ambivalent about timing. So we started at the worst po possible time, right? I mean, so that was just after the bubble burst, of right. the previous bubble burst, you know, so there was no funding. So, to, so yeah, you, if you just persevere, you know, but, you know, obviously if uh, you have, you know, a major adverse effect, you know, you know, 9-11, God forbid, then, you know, maybe, you know, not, nothing you can do to, to survive that. And skill, um, look, I mean, this, the single skill, right, is, and, and it's a cliche, and I'm sure you've all heard it, but I'll, I'll repeat it anyway. You have to find and attract and hire people who are smarter than you are. Mm -hmm. You know, your skill is in finding people. And it took me personally a really long time to get on with that program, right? Because I was always, I can do it, and like, for the Russians in this room, I know that's our mentality, and we all think we can't do it, we don't need anyone, and it's true to a point. But show me one individual that has built a world-class product without a team. You know. So we'll have one more question from you, and then I have one more from him, and then Vlad has an appointment. On I need to. He needs to then leave, so what is hmm. one who has an earth-shattering, fabulous question? Is that you? <laughs> um, Please, go ahead. Real quick, Vlad, this, uh, this kind of piggybacks on what other people are saying. What's the adoption rate in the M in SMB now? Are people, uh, do you see mid-sized businesses and enterprises now saying, okay, post avoid is okay? Well, as you well know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so look, I mean, we are definitely feeling uh, pull upstream. There is no question about that. Uh, we are, you know, still more heavily weighted towards smaller businesses. Uh, so to us, so we have this fairly arbitrary, you know, bands, but we have sort of 1 to 20 and then 20 to 100 and then above, right? So, and we are like 80% 1 to 20 still. 
but we're definitely growing, you know, uh, growing upwards. Yeah, uh, we see or I see no reason why this solution does not scale 20 to 100, 100 to 1,000, potentially beyond. So we're at the point where people say, you know what, I'm just going to buy a PBX that makes more sense economically. Is that at 100 or is that at 200 now or is that still at 50 or? It's like never, right? It's never. So, so, so if you, <laughs> so if you have a distributed workforce, then the PBX simply will not work. Like you can go Cisco call manager, and nobody knows quite how, but for very, very expensive, hundreds of thousands, millions of dollars, you can tie multiple offices together. Without it, you have to have the cloud. Uh, you know, I don't have exact data, you know, where that crossover is, depends on your use patterns, etc. But if you are sort of in a normal size business with, you know, 50 people, I don't think it's competitive. You know, cloud just wins. So, last question, quite trivial, but I always wanted to know. You got a prize at the, in Davos for the World Economics Forum as one of the top 25 innovation technology leaders. What did that feel like? in front of all these incredible people from around the world. Oh, uh, weird. <laughs> <laughs> is that a good answer? Yeah, no, I don't know. Uh, no, it was funny because, like you say, Davos, like you know how to pronounce it. Oh, like I got, I'm probably the only one in the whole room. It's yeah. not Davos, Davos. It is Davos, you. yeah. But uh, you, you know, uh, I, I, I had uh, one, one of our senior people, very senior people, who made a major difference in companies. His na name is Praful Shahi, he is one of the co-founders of WebEx. So this is another thing about luck, like this one person just walked in, single-handedly changed the uh, culture of the entire company. Why? Because he's been with a company called WebEx, where he was employee number three, and then he saw it grow to 3,000 and, you know, three and a half billion dollar exit. Uh, by Cisco, and uh, he walked in like a couple of years ago and he says, did you check your junk folder? Because he knows me, you know, <laughs> lately. And I go, no. He goes, you should check because you have probably deleted this email where you may have won a prize. <laughs> and that's it. Really <laughs> <laughs> so I actually had no idea, you know, I didn't know what it was or what, you know, uh, but... Uh, and when you went there, you probably realized it. Uh, yeah, no, no, it's, it's, it's big, it's wild, it's you big. know, um, <laughs> uh, but... Uh, so the good news is, uh, you know, I wasn't alone, right? I mean, there were sort of a bunch of people who didn't quite belong there, let's say, you know. Um, and, uh, no, it's nice, you know, it's nice. But again, look, people are people, right? And, uh, like, everybody has sort of the same problems and issues, whatever. And, yeah, I mean, it's nice that you have, you know, literally the light, well, uh, recognition, but, like, you know, Gates and King Hussein, whatever, you know, sort of, like, in the hallways, but it's not like, like the, you know. But, uh, no, it's nice. It's nice to win stuff, you know. It's nice, nice to win prizes. Perfect. <laughs> On that note, thank you very much. Okay, thank you. Great reception. Good. Right on time. Right on awesome. Hey, where am I from? Okay, thanks, you. Remember? <laughs> Good. Thank you. Okay.